Hello everybody and welcome back to the MatVidPro AI YouTube channel. If you are a subscriber of the channel, please go and check and see if you are actually subscribed because for some reason YouTube has just been unsubscribing my viewers from the channel. I contacted them about this and they had little to say on the matter, kind of denying everything. But at this point it's been countless users that have had this issue, so please go check. Oh, and I do want to mention this, yes my voice does sound a little bit raspy. I I am getting over a cold, but don't worry guys, if I wasn't feeling fully up to it, I wouldn't make a video. So with that out of the way, yes, today I've got another AI news roundup for you guys. Some highlights from today's AI news roundup include updates to AI video generators, a new way that seemingly anyone can run SDXL on their machine at home, and Apple actually stepping their foot into the AI research game. All of this and more, let's dive right in. Let's start out with Apple's research. So this was announced by Hiatao Gu, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, on Twitter. He's introducing the latest research at Apple generating high quality images and videos with a multi resolution diffusion model. And this is a specific type of diffusion model that they have designed in this research called an MDM model. They are actually going to be releasing the code soon, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure exactly how involved Apple is in this research, so I'm not sure if they're funding this or if this is a team that they devised, but apparently they are involved. So Apple is, you know, taking AI seriously, just very much under wraps and in the background. Now the quality of these generations is definitely quite decent. It's like a lot of the other diffusion models that we see these days. Here's a close up of that same image, various art, photography, Star Wars characters, nothing too special, but this thing can do various resolutions as well as the text to video portion, which is actually pretty good for text to video. And we'll talk more about newer text to video models later in this video. And while the quality quality isn't groundbreaking in this model's imagery, this model doesn't need a pre-trained VAE, which is essentially what Stable Diffusion XL needs, to bring a full resolution image to life. So in this way, it actually is more efficient than just your regular Stable Diffusion XL. And if I had to guess, this also means that this model might be a little bit faster than Stable Diffusion at generating. Here are the video generation results. As you can see, it's definitely not the best model we've seen, but it's not the worst by any means. It's very typical for what we see in video generation. Some minor warping, very short clips going on, but overall not too bad. One other cool thing is that this model does appear to do some limited text, so it has limited text capabilities just like Stable Diffusion XL. And really guys, if I'm going to be honest with you, the two main most exciting points about this are one, the fact that Apple is somehow involved. I'm really interested to see what their idea and their plans for the future in AI is going to be. And so many models, including this one at this point, are catching up to that Stable Diffusion XL level, which really is quite a high level. It's just like a step or a generation behind Dolly 3. It looks like limited text capabilities and super high res stuff at that mid-journey SDXL quality level is seriously becoming the norm in the AI art generation space. There is no pumping the brakes in the world of AI. And speaking of SDXL, Command Duru here on Twitter, which is a phenomenal AI Twitter account, especially if you're into open source stuff just like SDXL, is showing off SSD1B. This is SDXL, but it's 60% faster and it uses 40% less VRAM. Of course, this is all open source on GitHub because it's based off of SDXL, which is open source. You can try it for free inside of a Google Collab as well. These distillation trained models produce images of similar quality to the full sized stable diffusion model while being significantly faster and smaller. And these results definitely speak for themselves. Now in the full research paper, they don't mention any specific VRAM usage amounts, but the general consensus is that it's about 40% less. So that's around six gigabytes of VRAM to run this stable diffusion XL. And if you were to run this at home using the trick that Comfy UI uses, is that potentially maybe three gigabytes of VRAM to run this? 
Take what I just said with a giant grain of salt, but it might actually be possible. We also have even more AI running on your own machine at home news today. Purs XYZ on Twitter is mentioning that if you have an M1 slash M2 Mac, those are the specific processors that you can get in some Macs, you can now generate AI images in less than a second in most cases, thanks to the new latent consistency model. This is specifically for Comfy UI, which is, in my opinion, the best way to generate stable diffusion on your own machine at home. But as you can see for Comfy UI, they do have an installation for Mac Silicon M1 and M2. Seems pretty simple overall to install, maybe not as easy as the install for Windows. But if you then install this latent consistency model for Comfy UI on top of that M1 Mac Comfy UI base installation, you can do full SDXL generations in under a second. So that's just absolutely mind boggling and incredible. That's probably better generation speed than you get from any website that has SDXL for free. So maybe M1 or M2 Mac is like absolutely the way to generate with Stable Diffusion XL for completely free at home on your own machine privately. Truly guys, this is why we love open source AI. Just generating stuff for free on your Mac at home. So shifting our focus to open source large language models. Lewis Toonstall on Twitter is excited to release Zypher 7B Beta. This, to my knowledge, is the best 7B sized open source large language model we've seen yet. If you don't know what that 7B means, it's the parameter count for the model, essentially how large it is. As an example, the free version of ChatGPT is 180 billion parameters, where this is only 7. Now, for a while now, these open Open source large language models have been more efficient generally than models like we see with ChatGPT, but they're not as big, so they're not as competitive. But for the same amount of electricity or processing power, they give you a better bang for the buck. This Zypher 7B model, as we can see from this chart, beats out the previous winner, which was Mistral, which I just talked about a few AI videos ago. That model is also 7B, and you can see the bench score for this one is 7.34 versus Mistral's 6.84. What's pretty insane too is that this thing is actually beating the 70B Llama 2 chat model as well, which Mistral was pretty much tied with before, and it's even taking on Wizard. Wizard LM 1.0, that's also another 70B model, 10 times the size of this Zypher model. And at least in this specific benchmark, we're starting to get close with these small open source large language models to GPT 3.5 Turbo, free chat GPT. And guess what? These 7B models, there's a good chance that they will be able to run on just your cell phone locally. Pretty freaking incredible. There is no stopping the open source AI world. If you actually want to try this thing out for yourself, you can try it for free in the chatbot arena, which allows you to benchmark it against some other LLMs in the wild. So I will also link this down below with everything else. And I gotta say, after just some brief testing, it's pretty clear that this thing is at least as good as Llama 270B, and it's way faster and way smaller of a model. I mean, just such a mind blow. Both of these models can rhyme as well. Do you guys remember when the OpenAI GPT models couldn't even do this? But yeah, like I said, this thing is based off of the Mistral AI architecture, which is really good. It's also using an UltraChat dataset that has dialogue from ChatGPT and another feedback dataset with prompts judged by GPT-4. I don't know, do we call that cheating or what? Either way, they made this small model very, very good. And oh my god, guys, check out this benchmark. It actually beat the free version of ChatGPT in this Alpaca Eval leaderboard and is right behind Claude 2. Although in this case, Llama 2 Chat also handily beats ChatGPT. So maybe take this leaderboard with a little bit of a grain of salt, especially because GPT-4 also gets beat by this 70B model. Anyways, moving on to some really, really exciting overall large language model news. Guys, turn your attention to Woodpecker. This is Hallucination 
correction for multimodal large language models. As the paper states, hallucination is a big shadow hanging over the rapidly evolving multimodal large language model world. Essentially, a hallucination is like when the large language model makes something up about the image it's looking at that's not really true and not really there. So Woodpecker astonishingly can fix this. You can see before Woodpecker, this is likely what would happen. We upload an image of a dog, it says, please describe this image in detail. Features a cute red dog running across a grassy field and then it hallucinates around the dog, there are several other dogs visible in the background. If you've ever used Google Bard before, you'll know how bad their image detection is and how much of a problem this truly is. Essentially, what Woodpecker does is it identifies key objects that are mentioned in the caption. It then asks the LLM some questions to double check and see if the objects really truly exist in the image. It then uses another large language model to validate validate the questions being asked. It then goes back and corrects the caption based on the output, and as you can see, it can even highlight certain objects to validate the evidence. So the mini GPT-4 model was taken from 54% to 86%, and plug owl model was taken from 62% all the way up to also 86. All in all, Woodpecker had an 80% accuracy in mitigating the hallucinations of these multimodal vision models. Now, this might seem like some research that you're kind of whatever on. The main fact about this is that you don't have to retrain or redesign any of these models. You just take the base vision model that already existed and applied some after correction on. There's no modifying or rebuilding necessary here. It just works on anything, and that's my favorite kind of research. It shows you the untapped potential capability of these models, that they, they already possess it even if they don't seem like they do. It's just one of the coolest thing about AI models, you can kind of gaslight them in rough terms into becoming better. So now we're going to jump through a few quick little AI news tidbits. So the Poe AI website, which is very similar to ChatGPT and Character.ai, it essentially allows people to make custom chatbots using large language models. Well, they're announcing creator monetization inside of Poe, which is pretty big. This means that if you're great at creating custom large language model bots inside of Poe, which is something that I think pretty much anyone can learn to do, you can start making money on it. This program will support both prompt bots created directly on Poe and server bots created by developers who write code and integrate with the Poe API. Don't forget, Poe also has an iOS and Android app, and they think that this monetization has some real implications for people to make money on smartly created AI bots or smartly designed AI bots. And this is measured if a user subscribes to Poe because of the bot and you can actually set a per message fee for your bot and they'll pay on every single message so you can start making paid bots inside of Poe. We'll have to see my hope and my excitement for this is that it's going to drive people to really get good at making bots and we'll see some really highly capable bots emerge from this. Like I said, AI large language models have so much untapped potential and I'm hoping this monetization brings that out. Moving on, this is less of news and more of a reminder. Pierto here on Twitter is pointing out that fine-tuning an AI image generation model has so many capabilities. Like this, for example, is a model that's only fine-tuned on Toy Story, meaning it's going to surpass pretty much any other model out there in this specific Toy Story use case. So it's a very specific use case, but it's so good in that use case producing these characters almost perfectly in a variety of situations. And of course, with AI, a lot of the fun of it is mashing them up and generating Obama for good measure. So the future, I think, of AI art could be custom models for specific use cases and specific styles overall. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. It seems like OpenAI is hitching their bets on big models that can do everything just like Dolly 3, where the open source community is really focused on creating specific targeted models. Models. So Pika Labs, which is one of the greatest AI video generation models on the market currently, 
is teasing their Pika Beta 2.0 model, which is an upgrade of their current video generation model. They've got this little commercial here, which is made entirely with this model, and I find it very impressive. As you can see, as we move through here, we have some really detailed macro shots. That's clearly, you know, a rose, but we also see the detailed water droplets, and a lot of these are really starting to get usable. They're very high resolution as well. We've got like this rose honey that's dripping and diving into water. That's also so rose colored again very high resolution very satisfying not a lot of ai glitching or hitching going on oh we've even got these quote unquote sea minerals but this to me looks more like some walter white stuff still very nice macro shots you can see the way things are moving in the background is very realistic we've also got some rose petal leaves going on too which are very detailed maybe a little bit glitching going on there but still for ai video generation this is top notch this is top quality and the video continues it just gets more and more more impressive. Now this last piece, I'm not sure exactly how they did this. I imagine this is using some image to video to get all of that text right, but they even show you a side-by-side -side comparison because this is supposed to replicate a commercial. And honestly, it does an astonishingly good job at replicating said commercial. Obviously not perfect, but you can see these models are starting to get pretty serviceable. Speaking of updates to AI video generation models, Genmo AI has their replay model and it's getting updated to 0.2 with a new image to video mode. This also is high resolution and three times longer AI video generation. Genmo also has a little replay demo as well, and we can see the quality of this is very much up there next to Pika Labs. Maybe not as good, but still, look at the detail in that cat and in this little crochet wizard. You can almost see each individual hair on the cat's face. And of course, they're showing off that image to video technology that both Pika Labs and Runway ML are definitely known for. So really, Genmo with Replay is just proving that they can absolutely catch up to the big dogs here. They're competing very much with Pika Labs and Runway ML, and there's just no slowing down the AI video generation race. It's absolutely heating up. I'm really excited to see how this expands and increases in the future. And how long will it take for us to get AI video generation that's smooth, clear, and most importantly, long form? So this is another one of those that's still just more of a reminder than anything else. This is coming from Thebods on Twitter. 2D to 3D AI generation is absolutely on its way, and the specific user's predicting 2024 is going to be the era of this. I'm not so sure, but Dreamcraft 3D is looking very promising, as we can see in this little demo. Those little spinning cats are definitely very intriguing, and it all just comes from one AI-generated image. So I think I've said this before, but imagine a world in which we can pretty much tell an AI to make us a video game, give it some sample generated imagery that you like a lot, and it will actually be able to turn those characters into 3D models and animate and make a game for you. There's also other options such as Wonder 3D that are fully open source for this, but AI truly is just plowing ahead, especially on the open source front. That really seems to be the theme today. I've also got another example of some similar stuff going on. This is that Dreamcraft 3D model doing Batman just from an AI generated image of Batman and yeah it looks pretty good it even got his cape right which is really really shocking honestly like that is difficult to do it's not like you can see the back of his cape and this one was by John Barron so yeah keep your eye out for the 3D AI generations that are coming and our final piece of AI news comes from AK on Twitter which is again one of those amazing accounts you should totally follow for AI news this is common canvas an open diffusion model trained on Creative Commons images. This is more competitive with Stable Diffusion 2, not SDXL, so it's not the best model in the world. It still does decent AI generation though, and I think one of the main hopes here is that the Creative Commons images aid in the worries that people have about AI generated imagery, which is that it's using the works created by other people to make new stuff, and that is somehow the theft of those people's works. Now these topics and philosophy are absolutely up for debate and our legal system doesn't really know how to handle the whole AI generated art world yet, but Creative Commons should be more 
resistant to this. And maybe for those of you who are against AI art or AI of any kind, this is a little bit more ethically okay in comparison. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Should Creative Commons be used to train AI models in the future? This paper and research kind of prove that we do have a sufficient number of creative common images around 70 million to train high quality models. I don't know. I don't know what my opinion is on this yet. We'll have to see how things play out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today's AI news roundup. I thank you for your continued support on the channel. Please check out the discord where we have a wonderful AI community. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.